Hello, I am back. My local bookstore um, around Valentine's Day has these um, these books that are covered up in paper. They have a few hints on them, and the idea is that you're going to go on a blind date with a book. I chose a book that I figured would be a young adult contemporary because my hints were it's young adult fiction, it's a 2015 Village Books staff favorite, it has teenage twin narrators, and it's about young love and family drama. So yeah, young adult contemporary, which is not what I usually go for. I'm usually pretty bored. Uh, I really like um, a couple of John Green's books. I haven't read them all. Looking for Alaska is probably my favorite example of a young adult contemporary. So I was a little bit out of my comfort zone, but there weren't a whole lot of books left, and I wanted a young adult one, so I took my chances. So upon looking at it, I had absolutely no idea what I was, what I was looking at, because I had never seen this book, I'd never heard of it, I'd never heard of Jenny Nelson, um, and the book again is I'll Give You the Sun by Jenny Nelson, I think this is the cover that people see most often. So, blind dates can be very awkward. They can be slow to start or slow to finish. Sometimes there's a conflict of personalities or interests. And when I opened this book and I saw that the, the first chapter was told from the point of view of a 13-year-old boy, I was instantly regretting my decision. I was like, oh no, I screwed up. I am never, ever, ever going to be interested in this because 13 just is really young <laughs> and a 13 year old boy, like, oh, really? But then I read the first chapter and I fell in love. I'll Give You the Sun is told by a set of twins, Noah and Jude, um, and Noah is the first narrator. He's narrating events um, in their lives while they're younger, between the ages of 13 and 14, and Jude narrates their lives from around 16. This story is about them, it's about their family, it's about their struggles, betrayal, their love stories, it's about being hurt, mystery, art. Um, a little bit of everything about growing up. And it kind of starts out focusing on them as twins, as sort of almost a single soul, and then they begin to branch out and become their own people, and that's really cool to watch. In the end, it all kind of gets wrapped up. There are so many mysteries, um, and because they each only have one point of view of separate issues like at the end all of the mysteries get wrapped up and it's pretty cool i'm not going to go into what those mysteries are because i don't want to spoil anything i would like to talk about the two main characters because obviously they were the driving forces of the novel i'm going to talk about noah because he came first so noah is artistic he's sensitive he's got so many dreams he's a little bit whimsical He's also dealing with the fact that he's gay and trying to conceal it from his family and from bullies at school. Um, along with that, he, in the story, finds love, he finds heartbreak. I loved Noah. <laughs> I didn't think I would, but I did. I thought it would be weird to be reading from the point of view of a 13-year-old boy because we don't have very much in common. <laughs> but he was so refreshing. Beyond that, I'm really pleased with how Noah's sexuality was handled in the book because too often when a character in young adult fiction, um, or fiction at all, is gay, the plot consists of like just their big gay panic, that, that moment um, and coming out to everybody and that's about it. But this story is different. We get to know about all of Noah, not just his sexuality and I appreciate that. Moving on to Jude. So while I feel like I connected more with Noah because in the end I had more in common with him than with Jude, which never in a million years could I have imagined that would happen. I also appreciate 
Jude as a character. There's a serious growth in her through the story. At first it seems like she's trying really hard to be grown up and sort of dangerous and sort of living on the edge. But she's equally affected by the big heartbreaking moments in the story um, as Noah is and she grows in her own way. We learn so much about her. She rediscovers herself. She spends a lot of time in her narrative punishing herself for past mistakes. She le learns to push through that um, and use her heart to create instead of break down. So she's stubborn and smart and she begins to shine through the story. So that's a little bit about the two. They kind of end up trading places in this story for a while and it's really interesting to see how that happens, how that works out. I don't want to get into too much more detail because I don't want to give away any spoilers but I was so impressed by this book. It was so good and so beautiful and the writing was so quirky and witty and hilarious and I would kind of um, say if you if you like John Green I think that you would love this book just because I saw a lot of similarities in the writing. It has been so long since I just sat down and read an entire book start to finish and that's what I did with this book. So all in all I would call this blind date a surprising success. Um, I'm gonna have to try it again next year. This is such a cool idea. If you have the opportunity to to do this, I totally would. If your local bookstore doesn't do it, you could even get some friends together to sort of put together your own blind date book club or something like that. I don't know. It was a really cool idea. Five out of five. And that is it for this. So again, I'll give you The Sun by Jandy Nelson. Check it out. And I will see you next week with Eleanor Herman's Legacy of Kings.